in a long two days. So I'm going to give everyone a really small chance for a mental break. So imagine your favorite park. Maybe it's somewhere you went as a child, or maybe it's somewhere you take your kids or your dog. Imagine you're there right now. And it's a beautiful, sunny day, and you're not worried about giving a presentation or finals or grading papers. You're just enjoying your day. Now imagine you're walking around and you see a sign in the park that you've never seen before. This is what's on the sign. A housing developer has bought your park. Now imagine that you've lived next to this park for most of your life. You're probably wondering, how did this happen without me knowing about it? So you start going around to your neighbors and you ask them if they knew about it. They didn't. So you call the city. It turns out that your park was sold three months before they put up the sign, and the entire sale process has been going on behind the scenes for more than 10 years. What does this have to do with global issues, and what does this matter to you? Well, <coughs> there's a growing concern among scholars that globally, democracy is in decline. It's clear to those who measure things like civil liberties that those rights are being diminished at the national level. So what others propose is that we can reverse this trend in the local government. This is the government, after all, that most impacts your daily life. So before I proposed any solutions, I first asked, what are the challenges or issues of local government? And to answer that question, I looked at the secret sale of Pine Tree Park. And in my case study, I looked at local documents like city council meeting minutes and local newspaper articles. I then connected the issues that I found there to larger theoretical, uh, political theoretical concepts from scholars like Charles Lindblom, who discusses the role of business interest groups, theories of technocratic decision making by Frank Fisher, and ideas surrounding civic engagement and social capital by Robert Putnam and Peter Levine. And what I found in Kent through the Pine Tree Park sale are three main issues that negatively impact democracy. The first is that there is a favoritism towards economic development over quality of life standards. There's a universal ideology in capitalistic societies that cities must be economically viable, and that requires continually adding businesses and making sure that existing businesses are happy. This gives business interests what Lindblom calls a privileged position in government. The second thing that I found is that there are problems with the council that create an over-reliance on expert staff. This is a result not only of Western rational scientific thought, but also other issues, like the fact that the council positions are part-time, they're not well paid, most council members have full-time professional jobs outside of being a council member, and they're inexperienced politicians. The third thing that I found is that there are a lack of opportunities for meaningful political participation for the people who live in Kent. So to overcome these democratic deficits of relying on experts and lack of civic engagement, I argue that more meaningful, deliberative, and collaborative opportunities are needed. This means giving people the actual power to make policy, deliver uh, policy decisions through deliberation. Kent's current forms of engagement through surveys, commissions and coffee with the mayor are not democratic. Because in those instances, elected officials maintain all of the power and they are not actually formulating policy with you and they can choose whether or not to listen to what you have to say. Furthermore, if people had meaningful opportunities to determine policy, they might be more interested in participating. There are several global examples of deliberative forms of governing, one of which is participatory budgeting where citizens actually determine how city revenue is spent. Another is creating citizen deliberative bodies to determine certain policies. That said, the people themselves need to demand this power and invest the time and energy to make good policy demands. And so for examples of this, I looked at recent successful minimum wage activist tactics that included appealing to larger social values beyond increasing wages and ensuring good policy follow-through. Having more people involved in their local government not only benefits the citizens, but also benefits elected officials because it legitimizes policy. 
having more, this the time? Uh, addressing the privileged position of business is much more difficult and will require external government controls that are regional or even globally based. Because as we know from examples like Boeing, it is much too easy for businesses to simply move somewhere that has a better tax incentive. Another solution involves institutional changes that require having effective interest groups involved in policy deliberations concerning economic development. So after looking at a wide range of solutions, I found that people worldwide are concerned about declining democracy. After World War II, socialist democratic governments set up neocorporatism as a way to ensure fairness between interest groups. Participatory budgeting started in a town in Brazil in 1989 as a way to fight corruption and has since been used in more than 1,200 cities worldwide. In the 2000s, provinces in Canada set up deliberative bodies to address electoral reform. And activists have been pushing from the outside demanding more democratic governments. In 2016, the people of Kent, after learning about the secret sale of Pine Tree Park, started a grassroots movement in an effort to stop the sale. They were upset not only about losing their park, but also about the lack of public input. In the end, due to public outcry, the council admitted that they should have included the public in the park sale decision, and they actually did change the public notification process for public land sales. The council also reversed the sale of the park. Unfortunately for Kent, not involving the public was a costly $800,000 mistake because the council felt the need to maintain a good business relationship with the developer and felt the need to compensate them. But it did get the point across that failing to involve the public was unacceptable. In conclusion, current trends that consider providing and collecting information from citizens as good civic engagement is not enough. In order to have an ideal democracy and reverse declining democracy, officials need to balance business interests with quality of life issues and find proactive ways for citizens to be engaged in participatory democracy. Of course, that also requires a cultural shift. The people themselves need to see the benefits of participation and believe that they can make a difference. Because if people don't want to get involved, elected officials will continue to assume that it is okay to sell our parks and make other decisions without our input. Local government has the most direct impact on our daily lives, and so having a say in it matters wherever you live and whether or not you care about Pine Tree Park.